On behalf of the City of Brampton's Black Empowerment Unit, Unit, we recognize Dr. John A. Walker for your unwavering dedication to championing diversity within the Black community. Your persistent advocacy and invaluable contribution have played a pivotal role in fostering stronger, more vibrant, compassionate, and prosperous communities for all. And so we extend our heartfelt gratitude for your commitment to creating a more harmonious society. Again, this is from, signed by Patrick Brown, Mayor, City of Brampton, and Gwena Chapman, Senior Advisor of the Black Empowerment Unit, City of Brampton. On behalf of the Brampton's Black Empowerment Unit, they want to present this certificate to you for your years of service to the community. And we know, Pastor, that you have moved all the way to Edmonton. And you said you're in retirement, so you say. But anywhere you go, you bleed ministry. And so even in your retirement, I know that Edmonton is blessed to have you and mother. And thank you for your years of service and ministry. God bless you. Amen. At this time, Evangelist Marlene will come and she will bless us in ministry. Can we bless the Lord? Come on, you can do better than that. Can we bless the Lord? Can we magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, church, you know better than that person. Can we lift up the name of Jesus? Come on, church, can we magnify his name? Hallelujah, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Blessings, I love you, Brampton. I love you, Brampton. It's good to be home. I pray this song will be a blessing to your heart. Bless the Lord. As musicians are coming, just magnify the Lord with me. Just magnify the Lord with me. Just magnify the Lord with me. Y'all know my story. You know where I'm coming from. But I'm standing on top of my grave. I'm standing on top of my grave. God is still good. Cancer is still gone. God is still good. And he's worthy to be praised. In my down times, in my sad times, I used to sing this song and you don't know the meaning of words until it really hits you so I pray it encourages you this morning I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some lows but when I look around and I think my situation 
too good. When I took that fall on Friday, it could have been worse. You know, so I got up and I said, God, you've been good. You've been good, real good. And so all of us, all of us ought to be grateful to God. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time as we get ready. As we get ready for the word, amen. A longtime friend and brother, Elder Jermaine Williams was called of God at a tender age of eight and become, and has become a biblical concierge. A theological orator with an affinity and passion for the word of God. In his formative years, he was pastored and mentored by Bishop Frank A. Otto at the Linston Pentecostal Church in St. Catherine, Jamaica. I thought you were Canadian. He is currently a member of Grace Apostolic Church in Mississauga, Canada. Uh, Williams is an itinerant public speaker being used by God in a, dynamic, in a dynamic and inspiring way to preach at various conferences across America, United Kingdom, and the Caribbean. One of his most elemental and enduring convictions is that the imperative of the apostles' doctrine should not only be preserved on the pages of the Holy Writ or in history books. More importantly, they should be preserved and guarded on the canvases of our hearts and engraved in the fabric of our characters. Elder Williams is married to his beautiful wife and is a proud father of three beautiful girls. Professionally, he works as a software engineer for one of Canadians, Canada's leading financial institution and is a part-time professor at Conestoga College in Toronto. He holds a bachelor's degree in business technology management from Toronto Metropolitan University and a master's of science in information 
and technology. With your hands raised. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you for his life. We thank you for the gift, mighty God, that you have placed in him. We thank you for the place in which he stands, mighty God, to minister your word. But this morning, mighty God, we just want to hear from you. So we ask God that you will use him for your glory and for your honor. I pray, God, that he as he speaks, Heavenly Father, that the word will hit the good soil of our hearts. And in due time, there will be a harvest. We pray, God, for an open heaven even now that as he releases into the atmosphere, transformation takes place in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands upon him. Mighty God, give us ears to hear and a heart of understanding. Release your anointing upon him. Him, in the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together and let us receive Elder Jermaine Williams at this time. Oh, bless the Lord. Sword. 
I pray that you may penetrate the hearts of men, the soul, the mind, and the spirit. That your word, your God, not return unto you void, but that it is accomplished in this house what you have designed it for. Bless us today, we pray, as we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Somebody shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before you're seated, I know you're quick to sit, but before you're seated, before you're seated, I want to just turn to about three people and just tell them my theme for today. Uh, turn to them and tell them uh, it's my comeback season. We've been through a lot for 25 years, but we're, you know, come back. Come on, be, say it with some conviction. Come on, say it with some conviction, some conviction. It's my comeback season. Anybody believe that? Come on, do you believe that? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is my comeback season. Hallelujah. This is something I need all the help you can give me. Preached last night, came in late, so I need you to help me as much as you can on my monitors. Uh, I don't care about the house. Hallelujah. It's my comeback season. Yeah. Our faith uh, does not prevent us as believers from going through life's difficulties. It doesn't block us from the hardships in life. But rather, faith is the seed that produces character necessary for our survival. James states that knowing this, that it is the trying of our faith that work in patience. James used the phrase here, the trying of our faith, which implies that uh, the believer's faith does not produce until it encounters tribulation. It is in the midst of tribulation then that faith produces the fruits of the spirit that is necessary for our survival and for godly character. Uh, uh, a reductive uh, understanding of the pneumatic uh, Christology or the Holy Ghost uh, or the Holy Spirit has to transcend uh, speaking in tongues and just having a good worship experience. The Holy Ghost is what necessitates uh, building godly character. Uh, because you can be spirited in church and not be spiritual. Uh, can I say that one more time? You, you, you can run the aisles and shout and have a good time and be spirited, but you're not being spiritual. Uh, it is after then the trial of our faith that you will be perfected entire and wanting nothing. That is, uh, that is why some folks go through life's difficulties and they fall apart when they go through it. Uh, but you will go to the same situation and come out perfect and wanting nothing. Because when your faith encounters difficulties, uh, give me back my monitors, uh, it produces love, joy, peace, uh, kindness, goodness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, and self-control. So while you're going through the press of life, uh, it produces in you the fruits of the Spirit, uh, and you come out better and not bitter. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, 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 have you ever gone through a crisis uh, and it's after the crisis you look back over your life uh, and you said, you know what, I had to go through that uh, because I thought I was a loving and forgiving person uh, until they start telling lies on me. And I got to learn that I have to learn forgiveness. And I got to learn patience and kindness. So I went through it, but I came out a better person than when I went in it. Do I have a witness in here? Mr. Simon, I need this back the way it was. So then you got to understand then that it's during the pressing that you produce 
godly character, I would argue then that during the trial of Abraham's faith, that he was demonstrating the fruits of the Spirit because he was able to be, watch this, patient, gentle, peaceful, and kind while he was on his way to commit a very horrific and gruesome act. I want you to imagine with me that uh, while you're going through and you see Abraham was going to the mountain to kill his son. And while he's going, he's very calm. He's very peaceful and he's very calm and he's going up the hill to commit a very gruesome act. But watch this. He would have to be uh, an either a psychopath void of any empathy or lack uh, any regard for human life to be so calm or on the other hand is either he knows something that nobody else know that he had confidence that the same God that gave him Isaac that was the same God that was able to bring him back uh -huh. is either he's a sociopath or he's trusting God like a madman uh, God anybody in here ever had crazy faith uh, that people see you going through a storm uh, and you don't look like you're going through a storm. Uh, you're going through hell uh, and nobody will know the hell you're going through uh, because you come up in here looking like First Lady Walker like you ain't got no problem. Uh, come on, you gotta, you gotta help me here. You, you, you're going through hell and you dress the best you could, look the best you could, and praise God like you're going through nothing because you have the confidence that the God you serve. Ah, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Mr. Samuel, I need this furniture to be proper. Please, please, uh, don't let me work too much. Uh, so that you got to understand then uh, that it's during this time then uh, that Abraham was very calm and collected uh, because the fruits of the Spirit were working inside of him. Uh, and while he was going up to sacrifice uh, his son Isaac, uh, uh -huh, he believed and he was confident and characterized his faith, uh, Abraham, uh, as having the audacity of faith because he was absolutely confident that God was able to bring back Isaac from the jaws of death. That no matter where or where what he did with Isaac, God was able to deliver him. Can you imagine Abraham is the paragon of faith who was expecting God to give him back his son even after he sacrificed him. The difficulty here that I'm faced with in the text is that he was expecting God even when he felt God forsaken. Have you ever been in a place where you feel like God is not there? You know that you're going through difficult times when you feel like the omnipresent God is not with you. I don't know about you, maybe your neighbor. You're going through a thing and you can't see God, you can't feel God. It seems like you're all by your. Oh God, come on. That, that means then your sensual or your natural self cannot perceive God because you can't see him, you can't touch him, you cannot feel him anywhere around you. I know some religious folks who want to act like they always know God is there with them. And they pretend like they're always there and God is their BFF and they can do yeah. But there's some of us that sometimes we don't even feel like God is with us. You know you're anointed, you know you're called, but you don't feel God close to you. Uh, God, yes, thank you, Mr. Salman. So you're going through and you can't feel God the way you did, but you don't have to worry because Jesus on the cross felt God forsaken. And if Jesus can be on the cross and feel God forsaken, there will be moment when you and I will not feel like God is there. Uh, uh, put it back where it was. Just, just leave it where it was. Put it back. Uh, oh God. Uh, uh, so then you got to understand then uh, that here he is going through this period uh, and if Jesus can feel God forsaken, uh, surely you and I will have a moment. Uh, I don't see him, but I expect him. I don't feel him, but I expect him. I 
can't even perceive him because sometimes I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like even fasting, but I'm expecting God to show up for me. Uh, God, I don't always feel him. That's why you don't look for, you don't go by feelings. You go by what is in your spirit. Uh, do I have some spiritual people in here? Because there are times when my body won't feel like it. But in my spirit, I know my Redeemer lives. Oh God, somebody shout, I know. Oh God, shout, I know, I know he lives. So here he is going through a difficult crisis in his life because he's asked to sacrifice his only son. This particular chapter in Genesis is referred to as the binding or the Akida of Isaac. In this text, in chapter, in verse 9, it says, They came to the place which God told them of, and Abraham built an altar and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar. The difficulty here in the text I'm having is that if he's already submissive to his dad and yeah, and he's going up without a fight, why do you need to bind him to the altar? Why do you need to tie him to the altar if he's already submissive and going with you? Other postulate that, uh, here it is, that he was, this was done because Isaac was a type of the Christ. So then, and he becomes a type of the Christ that Jesus will be bound to a cross just like Isaac was bound to the altar that was in type. But can I go a little further here? I would argue that that's not only the reason, but I would argue that this was also a reflection of the ultimate lamb that would be paid a price for you and I. But it also signify and symbolize you and I being on an altar. Because if we're going to serve God, we got to learn to lay on an altar until things inside of us die. I know this might be the, the service to preach this, but, but, but I know you want to come to service to feel good and enjoy the singing and the dancing. But if you're going to truly serve God, there got to be a sacrifice. Uh, there gotta be a sacrifice. Uh, uh, there gotta be a sacrifice. And God knows uh, that we would not always want to stay on the altar. So in the spirit like Isaac, uh, God has to tie you there because if he doesn't tie you to the altar, you're gonna get up from it uh, and do what you want to do with who you want to do it uh, and where you want to do it. Uh, uh, God, I feel like preaching. Uh, as humans then uh, sacrifice Paul said uh, puts it this way he said uh, we are living sacrifice uh, so as living sacrifice uh, one day you want to submit to God uh, I'm going to preach to the real folks now uh, one day you want to live holy and righteous uh, and you're in the spirit realm uh, but another day you want to be rebellious and do you Anybody in here feel like that sometimes? Sometimes you're the most spiritual person in the house and the next time you want to go to the club and hang out and see uh -huh, your poo and your bay, uh -huh, although you're safe, you better talk back to me. Oh God, so that God can leave you up to yourself. He's going to tie you to the altar. Somebody shout, tie me to the altar before I leave the church. Oh God, you got to understand then that you got to stay on the altar. The sacrifice then, only stay on the altar under two conditions. The sacrifice, the living sacrifice, will stay on the altar when it's tied. Because if it's still living, it will want to get up. So God got to tie you with the Holy Spirit. 
Have you ever felt like leaving church, uh, coming to church and shut your mouth up? Uh, and you come and you're going to be stubborn. Uh, but you come and they start to sing a song. Uh, and you just feel your hands in the air. You promise you weren't going to worship. Uh, and you hear a hallelujah coming out of your spirit. Uh, because you made up your mind. But the spirit of the Lord is tying me to the Somebody shout, tie me to the altar. So we got to tie you to the altar until you die. It's, it's, it's a tying that makes you stay in church, submit yourself to God, until some things inside of you die. I'm tired of people coming up here and, and, uh, yeah, and telling me that I need to praise God and I need to worship God when nothing has died in their life. I don't want you to be of your flesh and leading me in worship. I need your flesh to die and be spiritual. Listen. You, you, you're in church and you think it's just about your gifting. It's not about your gifting. You don't lead us a holy place into worship and then on Friday night you want to smoke weed and hang out. The devil is a liar. This is the church of the living God and if you're going to be righteous, you're going to be righteous on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Baptist Sunday, I wish I had a church that understand and I'm going to stay until I'm changed. Somebody shout, time it to the altar. Uh, come on, shout. Come on, I needed a shout in the atmosphere. Time it to the altar. Hallelujah. So then you understand then that this is a process that if you're going to live for God, you got to allow God to control your tendencies. You're not the only one that feels like you need somebody. Oh, where the preacher's at? We all have the same passion and the same desire. But we ask God to help me so I don't go against his will. So, 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 let me move on. So that in our text, Abraham instructed the servants and he said, stay behind while he go yonder with the, lad, with the young lad and worship. Somebody say worship. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, when we consider worship in the Western context, it's a contradictory to the ancient Hebrew concept of worship. Oh God, in Abraham and Isaac, ideology of worship it institutes two imperatives a worship requires an altar and the sacrifice in our context of worship we expect the music to play a melody and you lift your hands and you make up your face and you say that is worship but in their context worship must have an altar and the sacrifice. Uh, so when you get the Hebrew tradition then, the altar in the Hebrew is a mesbeah. Uh, that's the word. It means a place of slaughter or sacrifice. It's typically wrought from the earth or on wrought stone. It is, it was a sacred place where divinity means the humanity. It is in, in the physical context, the altar was not a very pleasant place. The altar was a bloody, messy place where animal intestines would be extricated and burned on the altar. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and it would be a stench on the altar. There would be blood mixed with water and clay all around. And you smell burning flesh. It was a messy place in the natural but watch this on the other hand it was a beautiful place because on the other side it was a place of love and redemption because humanity will be reconciled with God 
of God. So this was what I call the contradiction of the altar because contextually or altar uses, the phraseology is used and he said the knife. When he talks about the knife in the text, when he raised the knife to kill his son, it was no ordinary knife. That knife in the Hebrew is a maleath, which simply means a butcher knife. It wasn't an ordinary knife he was using to kill his son. This means that the knife was designed not only to slaughter Isaac, but to dismember him as well. I want you to stay here with me because this was going to be a gruesome slaughtering of a living sacrifice. Abraham was going to slaughter his son, cut him up in pieces, and then expect God to give him back to him. What? He, he, he was going to kill his son, cut him up with a butcher knife, and he expect God to give him back the son he killed. I wish somebody would have that type of faith that no matter what you're going through, God is able to bring it back from the dead. Ah, God. This then is the contradiction of the altar because on one side, it is causing pain and suffering. On one side, nobody that is living for God doesn't have to, you have to make sacrifice if you're going to live for God. You've got to give up something. I'm tired of you coming to church calling yourself a Christian. Oh God, I know you didn't expect this on a Sunday morning. God. But you call yourself a Christian and you haven't given up anything for God. Uh, uh, there gotta be then uh, there gotta be some sacrifice uh, to give up something for God uh, but on the other side anytime you give up something for God uh, God will always give you something better you're not gonna give up anything uh, and God just leave you out uh, oh God I feel the Holy Ghost uh, on one side it makes me sad and it causes me pain because I have to give up something uh, but on the other side it makes me glad because it draws me closer to God oh uh, God uh, it hurts because I had to sacrifice the relationship uh -huh, for the God that I want in my life uh, it hurts on one side because I have to give up the woman that's so attractive uh -huh, for the God that I need. Oh God, can I just preach down your name? I gotta give up the guy with a six pack and the Mercedes because I want the God that that I need some real people to preach to. Huh? I gotta give up something for God. I gotta give up the job. Yeah, on the corner because I could sell crack cocaine and earn ten thousand a month. But I rather have Jesus than anything in this world. Oh God, yes, keep it there, please. Don't move it again. So the Bible lets us know that you gotta give up something for God. If you sacrifice for God, you pray. Praise God differently because we have some fake praises in church that has not sacrificed for God yet. But I wish I had 10 people in here that know that you got to give up a man, you gave up some money, you gave up alcohol, you gave up marijuana, you gave up illicit sex, you gave up fornication to be in the house of the Lord. And if you give up anything for God, jump on your feet and give God your best praise because my praise cost me. Uh, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my praise cost me something. I gave up the world for this. I gave up money for this. I gave up everything for the God that I love. Somebody holler, I made sacrifice for this. Oh, you may be seated. So this is a contradiction of the altar. Oh, there are folks that want to lead you into worship. And this is a problem why we're not having revival. Because you're leading people that make sacrifice to be in church when you haven't made no sacrifice. Put down the mic.
like and learn self-control. Can I preach like a feeling? Put down the mic and learn to let go of the weed. I'm going to preach so you keep me out. Put down the mic and learn to sanctify yourself until Christ before Oh, somebody shout glory. Oh, God. Let me just hold you on. So then while then he was about to sacrifice and he's heading up to Mount Moriah. It is here then. It's an interesting place because Abraham and Isaac was on one side of the mountain going up for the greatest challenge of their lives. Abraham had to deal with the sacrificing or slaying of his only son son and while he's going up on this side he's terrified because he got to give up the thing he loves for the God he loves the most and here it is God was on the other side so I wanted to see Mount Moriah. On one side, you have Abraham struggling with the conviction that I have to give up the son I love to God. And he's climbing up the mountain and he's struggling with himself because I have to give up something I really love. But on the other side of the mountain, this is what got me excited. God was also going up the same mountain and he was bringing a lamb with him. I wanted to see my Mariah. I wanted to see my Mariah. On this side, I'm fearful. It's not going to work out. I'm not going to get the job. I'm going to lose the house. And I'm worried about it. And on this side, gee, God is coming up the mountain with everything you need to get through what you're going through. Oh, God, I wish I had five people in here that understand. Watch this. That understand that while you're going up on this side of the mountain, you had Jehovah Jireh going up on the other side of the mountain and everything you need is on the other side of your pain. Is there anybody in here that is going to hell right now? I want you to jump on your feet and shout my blessing is on the other side. I wanted to testify. Testify to your neighbor. Shake somebody heard and say my breakthrough is on the other side of this. You're crying on this side. You're going to hell on this side. But my breakthrough is on the other side. Oh. Somebody shout, it's on the other side, it's on, it's on the other side, it's on the other, on this side, I lose everything, but on this side, I'm about to gain everything, on this side, my marriage is falling apart, but on this side, I'm about to have the best marriage in the next couple of years, somebody shout, it's on the other side, oh God, God. I need a worshiper in here, so Somebody that's praise him. I don't see it yet, but it's on the others. Oh God, can you, I don't know if you can just praise God for what's on the other side. One, two, three. Tell them uh, it's on the other side. It's on, it's on the other side. Encourage your neighbor and tell them it's on the other side. It's on the other side. Don't give up. Don't give in. It's on the other side. I see miracles on the other side. I see healing on the other side. I see bread too. I see a better job on the other side. Oh, somebody shout. It's on the other side. Anybody got the power in here? Lay your hand on your neighbor and say it's on the other side. So, 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 let me just hurry on. So then, so then, so then. Oh God, I, I feel like shouting. Can I get a miracle sound in the house? Yeah. It's on the other side of this. When we consider then the pericope of the text, it is here then in verse 5 where the paradox, what I call the paradox of him. Abraham told the 
young man and he said listen uh, he said let's stay here while me and the lad go yonder and worship and I got excited because Abraham knew in his mind he had a knife that was going to kill his son and he know he's going to kill him and yes he told the young man stay here until we come back not him alone till we come back oh god oh god the bible then wants you to know the paradox here then is that abraham knew the sacrifice or worship means he's going to do a gruesome act of killing his only son yet he promised the young man don't worry i'm coming back from this. I got excited when I read this pastor huh? because sometimes uh, church folks uh, get excited when they see all hell breaking out in your life. Not everybody, not everybody's praying for you. Some of them are happy you lost the six figure job. And they're excited, but I've got news for your critics. I've got news for your haters that you are coming back from this. Oh God, in my team, so then watch this. In other words, Abraham was planning to kill his son Isaac, go into a dead place, and he was expecting to come back from the dead place. Because when he stepped on that altar, it was a place of death. And Abraham expect to go into a dead place, kill his son, and come back out of the dead place with his son. And I said, this man must be crazy. How are you going to step into death and expect to come back out of it? And when I read a little further, I recognize that Abraham wasn't that crazy because Abraham knew something the rest of them didn't know. Watch this. He had the audacity to believe that he would dismember his son, cut him up. God's going to bring him back, put him back together and give him back to Abraham. The reason then I wanted to say here, uh, the reason Abraham had this audacity to believe God uh, was able to bring him back from the dead uh, was because Abraham knew uh, he came from a dead place in the first place. Uh, sorry you wait, I'm coming, I'm coming, I know you don't get it yet. Uh, because uh, I remember then uh, when, uh, when, when, when Sarah and Abraham wanted a boy, uh, Sarah's womb was dead and Abraham was dead. So when Isaac was born, he came from a dead place in the first place. And Abraham knew that if he came from a dead place the first time, oh, come on, then he can come from a dead place the second time. Of, I got excited when I read this because I realized that the same God that did it for you in 2015, you're not preaching with me. The same God that do it last year is the same God that can do it this year. Somebody said the same God. So if he did it then, he can do it now. And that's how he had confidence that the God that brought him out of a place that was dead called Sarah's womb is the same God that can bring him back from the dead a second time. That's why why I can preach today and tell everybody under the sound of my voice that you might be going through hell right now but I want you to stand in your dead place of your life with all the bones and the skeleton around you and tell everybody in your room that I'm going through a dead place right now but I feel in my spirit that everything is going to be alright can I preach to some folks in here? I need to tell you in here. Jump up on your feet and find about five people and pull them by the hand. And so you're coming out of this. You're in a dead place. But I feel in my spirit that no weapon. Somebody shout. Come on, pull out your neighbor. And say, neighbor, you're coming back from this. You're coming back from this weeping may endure for a night, 
but I. Somebody shout, I'm coming back from this. I'm coming back from this. I'm coming back from this. Tell my haters, tell my enemies that I'm coming. Oh God, oh, wait, 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 wait. Is there, is there a Joseph in the house? Is there a Joseph? Because Joseph, I saw Joseph. When Joseph got to the palace, they thought Joseph was sophisticated. But Joseph had to let them know, don't take me ordinary. I know I look like a prince now. But when I look back over my life, I've been a comeback kid all my where my comeback people at? I've been, anybody been a comeback person? I've been a comeback person. I came back from abuse. I came back from divorce. I came back from the lies. I came back from the rape. Anybody in here, open up your mouth and say, I'm a comeback kid. I'm a comeback kid. And if I did it once, I will do it. Oh God, I wish I had a witness in here. Tell somebody, I keep coming back. Oh she was surprised. I'm Jamaican. In the Jamaican vernacular, they have a thing that they say. Oh, if you don't know, ask a Jamaican beside it. There's a thing that they say in Jamaican that you're going to be tired to see my face. Oh, so people... Tell them what it means. Look at your neighbor, it's your neighbor. They've been trying to kill you for a while. They're trying to upper you. They try black magic. They try voodoo. But none of it will work. You're going to be tired to see. Oh, I almost feel like I'm in church. High five your neighbor and say you're going to be tired to see me because I'm not going nowhere. Because who God bless? Somebody give God a praise. I need my comeback kids to praise God in here. Open up your mouth and give God your best praise. One, two, three. Come on, I need you to clap your hands. Stamp your feet. Open up your mouth and shout, come back. Come back. Come back. It's my come back seat. It's my comeback season. What's this? When they saw him, that's why you don't envy people. If you saw Joseph in the palace, he doesn't look like he has been through the pit. He has been betrayed by his brothers. He has been to prison. And all these things in his past. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I don't care if you've been to prison or you have a criminal record. You are coming back from it. God is going to give you a comeback moment. Stand on your feet. Everybody stand. I'm coming back. I'm, 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 I'm going through a difficult time in my life. Hallelujah. Somebody worship him. I'm going through some difficulties in my life. But I want the critics to know. Don't, don't, don't have the funeral yet. Cancel the funeral. Yeah, yeah, cancel it, cancel it. It won't work because I'm coming back of this God's going to give you a comeback season and you're actually in your comeback season nothing they did is going to work come on somebody bless the Lord nothing they're trying won't work hallelujah come on somebody shall come back somebody shall come back come here I want to pray with you Somebody say come back. Somebody shout come back. It's my comeback season. It's my comeback season. Lift your hands. 
where the altar workers, I need two women to come, stand on both sides, one on this side, one on that side. I don't know what you're going through, I don't know your business, but goodness and mercy are following you. And nothing from your past is going to destroy you. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And God's going to open doors. Yeah, you feel alone like nobody cares. He said, I care about you. Can I get a worship in here? Open up your mouth. Are you ready? It's your season. It starts today. Somebody shout, come back. Somebody shout, come back. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout, come back. No weapon form against you. It's going to prosper. And every tongue we condemn right now in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and give God your best praise. Come on, open up your mouth and give God your best praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. I release you. I release you. No more chain. No more bondage. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lay your heads. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. You're coming back. Now begin to give God thanks. Open up your mouth and tell Him thanks. Yeah, just open up your mouth. Say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. No, don't stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the doors you've opened. Thank you for the way you're about to make. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. I'm coming back. I want to open the altar. I want some people that are going through real difficult times. Your son is in jail. You're dealing with cases. You're going through struggles in your marriages. The altar is open. I want you to come. Whatever it is, financial, whatever it is, come to the altar. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Come, come, come. Whatever you're going through. Yeah, come, come. I want to pray with you.
Your house will be delivered. Your house will be healed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord God. The Spirit of the Lord Somebody praise him. Shut up, 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 shut up
Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. 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 Glory, glory, glory. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I release a fresh oil from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' name. Come on, look, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your I need you to bless the Lord. Forget about the crowd. It's just you and God. Straight out of my side. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. You are God, you are God, the Spirit of the Lord. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Somebody pray with him. Come on, somebody praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This Sunday is the beginning of your comeback.
continue to reign on him. We declare God that he is victorious in his going and in his coming. We declare God that doors will be open in the name of Jesus. We declare favor and great favor upon his life in the name of Jesus. We declare that his borders are extended in the name of Jesus. Fill him up again. Continue to use him for your glory. Continue to use him, mighty God. That your work be done on the earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Your word declares, God, that we will produce after our own kind. And as he has released from himself, I pray, God, that there will be produce. Hallelujah. Mighty God, that will spring forth And as you have called him as a young man, so call others, women and men. May the grace and the anointing that is upon him, may it rest, remain, and abide in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Oh, and bless the man of God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him. We're going to ask our ushers to come forth.